Okay, so it's come to my attention that a lot of you want to start streaming here in 2025, but maybe you didn't even know where to begin. And well, that's where this new video series that I'm putting out is going to help you. It's gonna take you from square one, from nothing, to having a stream, having it look beautiful and nice and crisp to help you stand out in a sea of what seems like a never ending amount of streamers. There's millions and millions of people streaming on Twitch 24 seven. So this series is gonna help you get started. We're gonna start with the very basics of getting and installing OBS um, and take you to a level where you know pretty much everything that you need to know to, to fine tune your stream, to look and sound the way that you want. So let's jump over to my PC and get started. Real quick guys, before we dive into this video, we have tons of information to go over. I just wanna give a shout out and thank you to our sponsor for today's video, owned.tv. They have so many new graphics and things if you're trying to take your stream to the next level and start with some serious confidence and really nice looking graphics to help you stand out from the crowd. Owned.tv is the place to go guys if you're looking for some fresh new graphics for your stream. Whether you're on Twitch, YouTube, or Facebook gaming, you'll find something that's a perfect fit for your channel. They offer full themed overlay packages, which are great if you're trying to give your stream a complete makeover, but let's say you're just looking to pick up some new alert graphics. Don't worry, because they've got you covered there too. You could find single graphics such as alerts, banners, panels, and logos as well. And one of the best parts about most of these overlays is that they are completely modular. So if you and your friends all pick up the same overlay, such as this Rodan one right here, you can change the colors and tweak it to match your brand and none of you will have the exact same overlay. If you guys are looking to take your stream to the next level, be sure to check out own.tv using my link below to support the channel. Okay, so we're back at my PC and the first question that most people that want to get into streaming start asking themselves is, do I use OBS or Streamlabs OBS or some other program? The short answer for this is OBS. You're going to want to use OBS. I've tested out every piece of streaming software over the last eight years, and OBS is by far the best. You get the best quality, the best bang for your buck in terms of resources being used on your PC to run your streams, and it's really come a long way. There's a lot of integrations and a lot of cool features that you guys are going to want to use, and we'll talk about those in later videos. So the first thing you guys are going to want to do is head over to obsproject.com, and you're going to download OBS Studio for whatever your operating system is. I use Windows, so I downloaded the Windows one. Download that, install it on your PC, and open it up for me. Now, when you first open up OBS, you're going to get hit with the Auto Configuration Wizard. This is a great tool to get us started so that we don't have to deep dive into all these settings and make this video be an hour long. So run the Auto Configuration Wizard. It's going to analyze your system and your internet and basically set you up with the best settings that it thinks you can possibly have to start streaming, and this is more than enough to work with right now. So run that tool and then come on back. Okay, so once you're done running that auto configuration wizard, you're going to have OBS. It's going to look a little bit different than mine. Mine is pretty full right now. It's it's completely set up. Yours is going to look blank. It's probably going to be a black screen. There's not going to be anything under sources or scenes or any of these docs around here. So the first thing that I want to talk to you guys about that's really important is if you are streaming on Twitch, you're going to come down to your settings right here. You're going to open these up and you're gonna click the stream tab on the left side. You're gonna select the service as Twitch, and then you're gonna click connect account, and you're gonna log into your Twitch. Now, this is light years ahead of what it used to be. You used to have to go find your stream key in your Twitch settings and set this whole thing up manually. Now you're able to just log into Twitch via OBS. So log into your Twitch, hit apply, and then hit okay. This may or may not pop up some extra docs, like these things you see here, my chat, my stream information, all this stuff. These are what we call docs, okay? These are linked to your Twitch. And if you don't see them, come up to the top and click docs, and you may see them in here, Twitch activity feed, Twitch stats, um, which is a really good one that I use to kind of track, you know, what's, what's happening, how many subs I'm getting during a stream, how many live viewers I have. If I was live, it would show you all this stuff. Um, your Twitch chat. So go to your docs. And if you see that stuff there, uh, click it, it'll pop up like this. It's not going to be tied into OBS. You can kind of drag it anywhere you want on your screen. But if you do want to tie it into your OBS, you could take it, bring it over to the right hand side here or the left side. I drop my chat there and then I drop the activity feed here. These make tabs if you drop it on top of each other, which is also awesome. Um, so now in my OBS in one window, I can see my Twitch activity feed. I have my Twitch stats and then I have my Twitch chat right here. And if I was live, this stuff would also be live. So that is the number one thing you guys want to do if you're streaming on Twitch. This is not yet integrated for kick 
um, and YouTube. It's not as easy. It's still doable, but that'll be a time for another video. So after we got that set up, you're logged into your Twitch account. The first thing that I want to do with you guys is I want to set you guys up with two things in this video. By the end of this video, I want you to be able to hit that start streaming button and go live. And to do that, we're going to need a gameplay scene and maybe a chatting scene. So the first thing you guys are going to want to do is come down to your scenes, which should be on the bottom left hand side. You're going to hit the plus sign and you're going to create a new scene. Let's just name this testing scene for you guys. It's going to be called gameplay or whatever you want. I'm going to hit OK and now everything's going to be black because there's no sources within this scene. You guys can still hear me, but there's nothing happening. So now you guys can see my screen, at least my camera's not there, but I'm going to show you guys how to add that camera in just a second. So. What you're going to do here in this scene for sources, you're going to want to come down to the plus sign. You're going to hit video capture device. I already have my cameras listed here because I added them, but this is your first time setting up. So you're going to hit create new. You're going to name it whatever you want, webcam or whatever. And then you're going to select your webcam from a drop down and hit OK. So I'm going to add in my camera right here. That's my Sony camera. It's going to pop up really big. You can shrink it down using these points, place it wherever you want. Uh, if you hold alt, it can kind of, it will crop it for you like that. So you can kind of crop it however you want like that. Uh, if you hold shift, it'll actually stretch it for you. If you let go of shift, it'll go back to the, the normal ratio that it was. Uh, like I said, again, alt is what you hold to crop. It'll give you these green dotted lines to let you know you're cropping something. Um, so that's how you would add your camera, whether it's a webcam, a Sony, a Canon, DSLR camera, mirrorless camera, doesn't matter. It's going to be a video capture device plugged into your PC, right? So the way that I got you guys able to see my screen here is I added a display capture source. You come down to the plus sign, display capture. This capture will capture everything on my screen. Everything that's on my screen will be visible. If I drag windows over, whatever I do will be visible. Now, for there's some use cases for this. If you're watching YouTube videos with your audience, if you're showing some documents or something like that, that's what you would be using. But if you are gaming and in your gameplay scene, you're going to want your game and your camera for the most part, you would use game capture. You would just select the game capture and you would add a game capture. Now this will give you the option. It's going to say mode, capture any full screen application, capture a specific window or capture a foreground window with a hotkey. You're going to most likely be using the capture any full screen application. Any game that you're playing that's full screen or even borderless full screened will be captured. So that is the option you would use. And now look in your sources. You see how you have your game on top of your camera. The issue with that is that this source window acts as layers, right? It acts as a layering system. So if my game is on top of my camera, let me show you this. For example, we have my display capture right here, which is my monitor. If I drag this above my camera, it hides my camera because it's now over my camera. So any display capture, any game source, you want that under your camera. So now it's under my camera. My camera will be on top of that gameplay and will always be visible, right? So that is one of the most important things. Now, if we wanted to make a just chatting scene, right? That was basically just your webcam and a display capture. You would pretty much do this exact same thing. You would create a scene. The only thing that would be left out would be the game capture. If we deleted this, and we wanted to watch YouTube videos together. Now, anything that I'm doing here on my display is visible. So this would be a good just chatting screen and you can take your camera and you can make it bigger. Uh, you know, pretty much whatever you want to do, you have the option to do it there. And when you have your camera or whatever it is that you're moving around your gameplay, any source within this scene where you want it to be, you would hit that lock icon next to it. This allows it to not be moved. Um, you cannot accidentally move it. Even if I click on it, I can't move any of the elements in this scene anymore because both of them are locked. Now, the next most important piece of advice I can give you guys is going to be audio, right? People can watch something that looks kind of bad, but when it sounds bad, it's even worse. People need good audio. In my opinion, good audio is more important than good video, and it goes a long way. So you want to make sure that you are using the correct audio on your stream. Some people plug in a webcam or a camera, and they don't realize that that webcam or camera also has a microphone, and now maybe your stream is picking up that microphone instead of your own microphone. And if that does happen, um, I just unhid this right here. If you look in the audio mixer, this Sony thing right here, this is my camera that I'm recording on, this one right here. Uh, that's the internal microphone of my camera. You want to click the mute button here. Just like that. I unmuted it for a second to show you guys, but you want to click that mute button and then you can right click it and click hide and never see it again. 
Now to make sure that your stream is using your correct microphone, you're going to come to settings, you're going to go to audio, and over here in global audio devices under mic auxiliary audio, you're going to select your microphone from this list, whether it's a headset microphone, a USB microphone, a GoXLR microphone, whatever it is, that's where you're going to select it. You're going to hit OK, and then that's going to be popping up down here. Now, another thing people always ask me questions about is like, what's a good way to like switch between your scenes, right? I have this nice transition. If I were to switch to my gameplay scene, it plays my transition. And then here we are. Uh, we're going to go back to the testing scene. So there's a few ways you could do this. You could a click the scene itself with your mouse. If you just click it, it'll do the transition. You could also use an Elgato Stream Deck, which is this little device right here. It's kind of plugged in. I can't pull it all the way up, but you get the gist of it. You could see it. I have it set so that if I click my scene right there, boom, it's going to send us back to that scene. Um, and then another way you can do it is if you do not have a Stream Deck and you don't want to click through your scenes, you can also come into your settings, go to hotkeys, and set scene switches in here. Now, as I scroll down, you can see these are all my different scenes, right? Let's find like my gameplay scene would be kind of at the top of this. Scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, camera rounded, blah, blah, blah. Uh, main scene, cinematic gameplay. So you would click right here. You would select a hotkey on your keyboard, hit apply and hit okay. And then whenever you hit that hotkey, it'll switch to that scene, basically acting as an Elgato Stream Deck, but it's just your keyboard. Now, some people have a lot more keys on their keyboard than others, but I personally don't. I use these very small keyboards and I love using the Elgato Stream Deck. It's a fantastic piece of equipment. Now, one last thing that I want to talk to you guys about, right? You're going to start streaming, right? You need good music in your streams. Now, on Twitch, there's a little bit of a weird thing where if you're using copyrighted music, your VODs can be DMCA strike. There's a way to separate that audio using a Twitch VOD track, but that'll be another entire video because it's a little bit more complicated. So for the meantime, using good music on your stream is really important. Like I told you guys earlier, audio is more important than video, right? So you're going to want to go to Spotify or YouTube, whatever it is that you're using. Harris Heller, uh, the owner of Senpai Gaming and Stream Beats, made this a while ago. And myself, along with a ton of other streamers and content creators, use this on a daily basis. This is literally copyright free music, tons of music, different albums, different styles of music, lo-fi, synth wave, EDM, anything you could possibly think of. If you're using Stream Beats by Harris Heller, you will not get DMCA or copyright striked. Uh, it's really important to be pretty harsh about that on Twitch. Uh, they, their system for recognizing music isn't the best. So you want to be using copyright free music. Stream Beats by Harris Heller uh, is just that good. It's really good. I recommend it to everyone. I myself use it. It's the music you're hearing in this video right now that I recorded. I use it on my stream. It's great. There is just hundreds of hours worth of music, different styles, different genres that you guys can use. So that should be it. For the most part, this should be everything you guys need to start that stream and get started. You downloaded OBS, you had the auto configuration wizard set up your settings, you set up your gameplay scene, you set up maybe a just chatting scene or even just a gameplay scene is completely fine. And now you're ready to go. You can hit start streaming, play some of that awesome music, talk to your chat, and try and start building your community. Now, remember, as I said in the beginning of this video, guys, this is going to be a big series. And probably some of you are sitting there wondering like, oh, I want to be able to set up alerts uh, so that I can see when people follow me, this, that, the other thing. We're going to get to it. That's going to be an entire video on its own. It's a little bit complex. I didn't want this video to be an hour long. I'm trying to keep this short and concise, right? Because people, when they go and search up how to do this stuff, they want to get the information as quickly as possible. And I completely understand that. So if you enjoyed this video and you're excited for the future videos that are coming out on this topic, please subscribe to the channel and turn on those post notifications. Jump over to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash hammerdance. I also multi-stream over on kick at kick.com slash hammerdance. If you want to follow me on one of those platforms, that would be awesome. Also, my stream Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And feel free to jump into the Discord and ask any questions that you have there. I do my best to try and answer them, but we also have a lot of community members that really do a great job at helping other community members when they have the time. So anyways, guys, thank you all for watching and listening in. I want you to keep those hammers up, and I'll see you next time.